Usa, Usa. What is up, everybody? It is Dives, Mr. Crackpot on Twitter. Welcome to TPL Live. This is the Sixers versus Grizzlies post game show. The Sixers got the L tonight, 106 to 104. The Sixers move on to nine and five on the season. Today, we're going to talk about our top takeaways. We're going to talk about uh, grades and we're going to talk about the players of the game. Joining me tonight is my man, Rob. You know him on Twitter, at uh, Philly underscore Madness, the host of the Madness podcast, the voice of the people. How you doing, Rob? Doing good, man. Doing good. Uh, tough one tonight. Um, it was always going to be a tough game without Joe and without Seth, but, um, you know, Sixers shot themselves in the foot, turned the ball over 23 times. You're, you're not going to win too many bas- basketball games when you do that. Period. Also joining us tonight is my man, Justin. Uh, follow him on Twitter at J underscore Persichetti. Justin, what's good, man? I mean, listen, a tough loss for the Sixers. I mean, you, they kind of kicked themselves while they were down a little bit a lot of times in this game, though. So it uh, it's a tough loss, but hopefully we can come back when we get Joel and Seth back on, this, back on the floor. Uh, lastly, joining us is my man, Jason. JB is actually bringing something new here to our post-game shows. Uh, we're locked in here to the media availability post game um sure doc everyone will be uh speaking uh follow my man jason on twitter at jay Ble- J blevins mba jason how you doing i'm good i think uh you know we were critical during the game of a lot of details but this was kind of a predictable loss you could almost schedule this loss uh without joel and bead so we talked about it before the game this this to me felt like a loss uh, the fact that they had a chance to win it uh, in the final seconds, you know, wouldn't get too worked up over it. Again, we will be showing you uh, media availability of the Sixers players and coaches talking to the media right when it happens. Uh, please stick with us. Uh, main takeaways tonight has to be the turnovers. Uh, really just representative of the last few possessions by the Sixers. You saw a Ben Simmons bad pass uh, stolen by Jay Morant. Um, And then you saw uh, my man Tobias Harris step out of bounds. Rob, you touched on it. What? How many turnovers? Uh, 23 turnovers led into uh, 17 points off turnovers for the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, And then Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons, uh, he had a block there leading at the end of the fourth quarter there. Ben Simmons had seven turnovers on this game. The starters in this game had 16 total turnovers. You're not going to win many basketball games doing that. Uh, Rob, what was your takeaway of this game? Yeah, I think my my takeaway is, you know, this offense does not get what they're looking for. Um, And because of that, it leads to these really bad turnovers. I thought Ben made many of them on his own tonight. Um, I saw a lot of that patented one in the lane, jump in the air, turn around and try and pass the ball back out, which led to some of the turnovers. But um, I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm highly concerned. Their their offense runs through two guys that were not in the lineup. Yep. And, and really give Memphis some credit. As, as Jason pointed out during the game, they took away the shots the Sixers wanted to have. And, you know, the Sixers were not able to adjust. They kept it close because they're just more talented than Memphis, uh, but they weren't able to pull it out in the end. And, um, you know, short memories because they got to get back at it with pretty much the same lineup uh, tomorrow night. So they, they, they can't sit here and dwell on it too much. I've been saying that Seth Curry is the engine of this team. You look at the Sixers starting lineup, one of 13 from three, uh, just the, the amount of impact Seth Curry has on this team in terms of spacing – and you touched on it, like the Sixers didn't get the shots they have seen uh, in the previous 14 games this season. Uh, good, Justin, what was your takeaway of this game? I think uh, more than obviously uh, Ben Simmons struggling on the turnover side of the ball was uh, was a big part of it. I mean, overall, the Sixers had 22 turnovers, which I'm not sure what that led to in points for them off turnovers, but obviously I'm, I'm sure it was pretty high. Um the other thing that was the issue and something that we've been better at this year in past years is three-point shooting and percentages. And that has something to do with the shot uh, shot placements that we – the shot uh, shots that we've been able to get uh, today. 
But we shot 28% from three today, which is just not going to win you a ball game, especially with how this team usually plays with the three ball and the ball going to the interior. Um, so, yeah, you're just not going to win that kind of a game. And like Jason said, it was kind of predictable uh, being that how this team is being built right now and just the momentum wasn't really there throughout the game. So what are you going to do? Right on. What about you, Jason? You know, as I sit here after this loss, um, Ben took three really good shots. Uh, as, as hard as we were on him, I think back, he took uh, two turnaround jumpers. Um, they were about 10 foot uh, jumpers, uh, one on the left side, one on the right. And he took a above the break three in rhythm, no hesitation. Missed it, missed it badly, doesn't matter. Um, that gives me a little bit of hope that all of the stuff we were, you know, complaining about early in the game, which were leading the turnovers, he actually did, uh, he, he did attempt to fix those. So the turnaround jumper is not going to be a strength in his game. He did make two of them. Uh, but you know, I think there's, there's, there's good in this, in this loss, a um, lot of stuff to work on, though, because I, I think they're going to have more games where they don't have Joel Embiid, and I don't think adding just Seth Curry into this would have solved some of the problems tonight. Uh, yeah, defensively, the Sixers really struggled today. Uh, the Sixers really gave up uh, five, uh, 60 points in the first half and really never looked back uh, defensively. Uh, the the Joel Embiid absence was real, truly truly right, felt. Fifty six points by the Memphis Grizzlies uh, in the paint. That is a major major thing. Let's go to the uh, uh, media availability post game show. Hey Doc, late in the game like that, how much do you think about the lack of practice time that you guys get to have this season when it comes to adjusting things that maybe you could improve on in the future? Uh, I did today, Lauren, honestly. Um, we were just very undisciplined, sloppy uh, with the basketball all game. Um, you know, turned the ball over down the stretch the last two times down the floor. Uh, 22 turnovers as a team. And still had a uh, final shot to win the game. So, um, disappointing loss to me because very winnable game tonight, you know. Um, and we just didn't get it done. Thank you, Doc. Mark Narducci next. Doc, on a night like this with Joel out, how disappointing is it that Ben and, and Tobias just didn't seem to get it together until Tobias did late in the game? You know, I, they, listen, Mark, they're human, so I don't worry about it. You know, they play well, fight as far as shooting or something like that. That's a human fight. You can't this fit tonight. I'm going to be great. You know? um, I was just – I didn't like how we played. Uh, it's not who played uh, tonight for me. It's how we played. Um, I thought we were a sloppy basketball team. Um, and when you play that way, you deserve to win. Uh, you know, on the road, 22 turnovers in this other team. Uh, I would say up to 22, you know, 15 for a You know, just sloppy, uh, driving into traffic, all sport passes, interior passes where they should have gone out. And then I also thought we had a strength when there was no ball tonight as well. So I just didn't like how we played. Thank you. We'll go to Paul Hudrick. Hey, Doc. Uh, it, it really seemed like Shake kind of really willed you guys there, you know, in the, during that stretch when the offense was struggling, you guys were turning the ball over. Just kind of what have you seen out of him the last couple of games and especially his ability, it seems, to get to the free throw line recently? Yeah, you know, it's funny for Shake. I thought it was a great example early on because he had a great game. It, it almost like he tried to come into the game to get everybody else going. Or, or, and I told him, Shake, keep it on. Keep the foot on the gas. I mean, don't don't hold yourself back. Like, I thought he held himself back in the first half. I thought in the second half he went for it. Uh, and I want Shake to be that way every night, no matter who's on the floor. Uh, at all situations, because that's his ability. And I'm trying to get him to see that every night that can be shaped up. Uh, tonight, late he was. 
Thanks, Doug. Ty Carlin. Hey, Coach. So just to kind of uh, piggyback off that Shea question, when, when you do get your full complement of players back and, and Seth and everybody, how excited does that make you to kind of be able to turn to Shea and Tyrese as a backcourt off the bench and just have let those guys just kind of go? Yeah, it's nice. You know, um, you got a lot of offensive firepower. And what I like about both is off the group. You know, they can get into the main action. Um, it's really nice to have once everybody gets back, you know, Thank you. Next up is Keith Pompey. Go ahead, Keith. Sorry about that. Uh, Doc, I know you talked about you don't care about who plays, but it just seems like when your starting lineup is intact, you guys are 7 0. Um, you guys are 2 1 5. Uh, when at least one starter is out and those two wins came against Miami. Um, is, is it just a little hard just as far as getting the, the rhythm down without these guys, you know, out there? Yeah, but, you know, keep, like, I'm not letting our guys use excuses. Like, we got to get away from that. Like, listen, uh, this is going to be an extraordinary year. Uh, get over it and, and win the game. Find a way to win the game. This was a winnable game tonight, and I'm not going to let the fact that, that Burkhan, Seth, and, and Joel, that if you if just think if they weren't on our team tonight, this game should have been won by us. And that's the mentality we have to have. We can't accept, well, we'll be good for everybody. So that's not acceptable. All right. Thanks, Doc. One more with Jason Blevins. Hey, Doc. Uh, just looking at the, the shot chart, it just doesn't look like the kind of chart you'd want to see doesn't look like you got the shots that you wanted to uh, take. Is that true? Is that fair? I don't know. I can look at the shot chart and see that. I can just, I can watch the game. We didn't play like we played. The ball wasn't moving tonight. We didn't get into uh, you know second actions tonight. Everything was a first action shot, first action shot, no pass shot. I, I don't think good teams play that way. Thank you. All set. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. So um, for those, I, I think someone asked how, how you get access. Um, for those that don't know, I'm a, I'm a credentialed uh, reporter for TPL uh, and 97.3 ESPN. Um, that is, uh, so I'm credentialed to cover the games, uh, home games. I'm going to be at a lot of those home games, uh, covering from the arena. So we're going to try to figure out how to do this while I'm there. Um, if you guys like it, um, but, but I have, you know, I actually, uh, obviously access to the, to the zoom, uh, availabilities after practice, after shoot arounds before games, after games. So normally in previous ones of these, I would jump off uh, after the game to go beyond these. And we're just trying something different. Uh, I'm just sharing my screen so you guys can sort of see the process as, as we go through it. Fantastic. Yeah, people, people keep saying they want they want uh, charts, a.k.a. Chris Coyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to ask it because it was such a – it's becoming a theme, right? Um, <laughs> and, uh, hey, look. You guys know I'm not I'm not going to, you know, if I say it, if I say it to you, I'm gonna say it to him, right? I want to be consistent. Yeah, what you should do is bring up bring up during the Zoom call, share your screen on the Zoom call. <laughs> no, I don't have access to that. So. <laughs> yeah, I actually Imagine. forgot to turn my camera on, which is one of our rules. We have to turn our cameras on. Uh, I forgot to do that um for for Doc. So Imagine you um you bring imagine you're allowed to share your screen. You bring up the shot card. Hey, Doc. So from this shot chart, <laughs> are these the shots you wanted. Oh my god, that would be so funny. All right, let, let's move forward into our players of the game. Uh, not to toot my own horn, I, I, I went with Shake. He had 28 points in 33 minutes, four assists, um, five turnovers, which is not great. Uh, two for five from uh, three point range. Uh, Rob, who was your player of the game tonight? Yeah, I think it was Shake. Um, I thought, you know, as as Doc alluded to in his press conference, he was kind of holding him there and 
And what I like is he told Shake, yo, keep the foot down. You know, this is this is your game. Go after it. Um, and look, I said in the beginning of the year, I think, Dives, we were asked a question a lot before the year started. You know, would you insert Shake into a starting lineup? And I said, I kind of like Shake in that six-man role um, in Doc's offense. I'm not saying he is Lou Williams, but that type of player coming off the bench. And and you've seen it the last couple games from him. So uh, good pick by you, Dives. I'll go with Shake Milton. Uh, Justin. I'm going to say Dwight Howard. I feel like Dwight Howard's gotten a lot of love the past the past few games uh, just for playing playing pretty well. But he really stepped up with Joel not being on the floor. I mean, he got 18 boards. He had three blocks. Uh, he had eight points, respectively. So, like, realistically, that's that's what you need from Dwight. You need him to be able to stay on the court all game and get, those, get that production from a rebound perspective. Um, so I think all around they didn't they didn't win the game, and I mean the uh, the Grizzlies had a good amount of points in the paint today, but overall for what he needed to do, he played well. And just to like piggyback off of what Jason said and why we are so lucky to have Jason, I'm watching the NBC Sports Philadelphia broadcast right now, and Doc Rivers is still talking during his uh, post game media availability. He's been off this camera here. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you turn on notifications. Like, we're, we're ahead of the game here. Jason, who is your player of the game? I agree with with uh, Justin. I think Dwight controlling the boards uh, enabled that comeback. Um, it was a grinding, slow comeback in the, in the second half. But, they, again, they were, they were tied in rebounds at the halftime. And I believe they out rebounded uh, Memphis by like a dozen. So, out rebounding a team by by twelve uh, boards in a half is huge. And, and Dwight and Ben get credit for that. All right. Yeah, All right. we had fifty three rebounds. They had forty two. Yep. Yep. Let's go on to team grades. How would you grade tonight's performance? And Jason, if something comes up, just feel free to like completely cut me off. Um, no, you'll, yeah, you'll hear it. You'll yep. hear it when it comes up. All right, sweet. Um, so let's go on to team grades. How would you grade tonight's performance? Um, the turnovers, the lack of good shots, Ben Simmons' uh, failure to to really kind of control the offense tonight, um, really tough to watch. Um, God, I, I, I thought this would be a close game. I'm going to give them a C-. minus. What about you, Rob? I'm going to give them a D because, you know, listen – <laughs> and, and, and and what I really like about Doc is he, he, he calls it like he sees it. You know, he came on, he said, we were bad. We were sloppy. We were not doing the things we're supposed to do. You know, he specifically mentioned one passing shot, no passing shot, and, and things of that nature on, on, on the offensive end of the floor. Um, I don't think you can give them higher than that because they did – look, I know they were shorthanded, but they shot themselves in the foot tonight. This game was extremely winnable. The way it played out, they should have won the game. And because they didn't, you know, you, you, you got to really go after them for that. So I'll give them a D. Uh, we're getting a lot of Ds in the comments. Uh, only, only big Shane Gillis agreeing with me with the C. Justin, what's your grade? Well, I'm going to go with Dunder Dude and say D for don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, this this game, I, I agree with a lot of what Rob said and a lot of what Doc said. It was a very winnable game, and we just didn't play our game. We played into the Grizzlies' defensive scheme uh, against Ben Simmons and against our offense, and that's just how it went. We weren't able to rise above it at the end either. Um, I will say I think I should we can we should give them a little bit of credit where they were able to stay in this game for a while. I thought they were going to lose their grip on the game, um, but ultimately they just didn't play their game tonight, and that's why we lost. I understand people are upset that we didn't beat the Memphis Grizzlies. You're not going to win every single game. This is the mm -hmm. nature of the NBA season. So that's why I kind of gave them some slack. Jason, what's your grade tonight? Uh, I think a, a D plus. I think they gave themselves a chance to win a game that looked a lot heading into it, like a loss. I predicted a loss. Uh, I predicted like a six-point loss. Uh, they gave themselves a chance. So a D plus, um, I just, there's a lot I didn't like about it, but then they, 
I think their talent shows, even when they're missing two of their biggest pieces offensively, that um, they're able to keep themselves in striking distance. So, All right. All right, let's go. Before, before we go into our next interview, let's talk about Tyrese Maxey. Tyrese Maxey had 12 points. He was a plus two, uh, five of 13 from three, no three-pointers tonight. Um, again, Tyrese Maxey played 25 minutes. He has a 6% turnover percentage. He played 25 minutes tonight. Goose egg turnovers tonight by Tyrese Maxey. Not his best performance. Um, but, Rob, how would you? what was your take on Tyrese Maxey tonight? He's been the darling of Sixers Twitter. And how would you grade his performance? I mean, you know, Ty, Tyrese didn't do anything that jumped off the pages. But when you talk about a fact that here's a rookie in the league, uh, a guy that just kept falling for whatever reason in the draft, have zero turnovers and that amount of time played, that's a positive. And, and I think everything you see out of Tyrese Maxey is a positive right now, especially all the experience he's been getting during this COVID crisis that the Sixers have gone through. Um, so I'll give him a B because I don't, he didn't do anything to hurt you. Um, so, you know, I think I'll give him a B for that. Uh, but I'm, I'm just I, – listen, I'm excited to watch. Even the night, they didn't play well. And the team is excited. Like, I, I get excited to watch this team. And that's that's all you can ask for from a fan standpoint. Real quick, yeah. while, we're, while we're waiting to watch this game – or, sorry, watch, watch this interview, can I pull something up from Twitter real fast that I want to talk about? Is that possible? What's yeah. up, Jason? Jason, is it possible to remove to, to like remove this from the screen for a second while we're yeah, waiting? I might just have to throw it right back up, but go ahead. All right, that's fine. Yeah. Um I want to share we'll still hear it either way. Okay. Um so this this is something that drives me nuts about like overall like media about Ben Simmons. There it is. So the and this and this is exactly why that was great. Um, Let's this, see hundred more of those. Exactly, but but this is exactly why there's such divisive about Ben because you'll have some people who will say, okay, we we need Ben to start shooting, we need Ben to start getting more like to put up some more shots, we need him to do this, we need him to do that. But then at the same time, you're gonna you have to take the negative effects of that with the positive effects. You have to take the fact that he is going to be. Um, like he's gonna make mistakes. He's not gonna make all his shots. He's gonna have growing pains if you want him to grow as a player. And that's what it comes down to. And this that's what kind of like gets frustrating with the media, um, or national media, I should say, with this, because that's the kind of stuff that creates divide about Ben Simmons, in my opinion. Jason, does Ben Simmons see that tweet? It's bleacher report, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that a problem? Is that is that like is that fifty percent of Ben Simmons' problem? Well, it it can't be. If it is, if, if you know that's true, you have a big problem. I just I don't think I don't think you can have that mentality. So uh, he should be celebrated for taking that that shot in. Really. I agree. I fully agree. Uh, what was your take on Tyrese Maxey's performance? Uh, I think I think it was he came down to earth a little bit, um, but I think. It's a function of how the defense was playing, and uh, I liked a lot of it. So, I, uh, I, I even in a five for thirteen night, I liked a lot of what he did. Love it, love it. Um, so let's go to some comments here uh, while we wait. Uh, again, thank you everyone here for waiting and commenting. The uh, man, it, the the comments are flowing to me. <laughs> Uh, a, lot, a lot of positive comments about Jason this right here, what we're watching. Uh, people are saying if, if this is what it is, like uh, TPL just went up a notch. Um, Marquis, well, it's not our job to be worse than other places. Can we um, can we talk? Oh, never mind. Oh, here we go. We're going to go to the Tobias interview here. Harris coming here to this primary Zoom. Tobias Harris up next. Everyone mute. I don't have a question for Tobias. If anyone has a question, put it in the comments. And if it's a good one, I'll ask it.
Um, when this gets when this gets done, whether or not we we want to talk about what Tobias says uh, or whatever, I do want to uh, talk about Shake Milton a little bit because I just found a graphic on Twitter talk and it, like talking about his last three games and his last three games are pretty impressive to me. So, can I bring that up? Do you want me to bring that up while we're waiting? Up, oh, never mind. Here he comes. No, he's coming up right now. Here he comes. Here he comes. The man, the myth, the legend, Tobias Harris. <laughs> All right, we'll get started with Lauren and Mark. Lauren, you can go first. Hey, Tobias. After a tough loss like this, how do you make sure that you and your teammates can have sort of a short-term memory um, and, and get things turned around for tomorrow night without losing too much time over this? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we, we start both, okay? Learn in different areas where we could be better out for ourselves uh, that type of position uh, so at the same time we have to take what we can from it and you know, obviously like game like tonight and it's back to back so we have to kind of have short term memory let go of some things and be ready for tomorrow's game to get back so uh, it's a little bit of combo goal keep our head high keep our spirits up or just keep on track Thank you, Tobias. Mark Narducci. Uh, Tobias, how frustrated were you by the turnovers? And and could you tell us what happened on that last play with 5.9 seconds left? Yeah, you know, turnovers, I think, and plus I, including myself, maybe myself. Not too many turnovers, late turnover, late in the game. I'll take much. But you got to be able to get a, a team of basket uh, in, in crunch time. Uh, you know, I saw the replay. Look, it was real close. Put on, put on the line or what? But um, yeah, it was just probably should have went to the counter move, got a shot off. By the end of the day, uh, got to grow from it, got to progress, got to be ready for the mob. And you know, on top of that, um, too many turnovers. Stuff. On my part on our team, uh, that led to too many easy baskets for them. And that was really where they got the, their momentum. Their squad out there. Keith is next. What's up, Tobias? Tobias is, is a crazy stat. Like when you guys, when you have all five starters, you guys are seven and zero. Um, when one, at least one of you guys are out, you're two one five, and those two wins came against Miami. Um, I mean, is it just as simple as, I mean, all five of you guys need to play? Or, I mean, I mean, what's the reasoning, in, in, in your opinion, on why you guys can't win um, when you guys don't have the starting lineup? Well, I mean, uh, nice. It's a 14 game in a uh, weird year, so to call it, as you may say. Um, but at the end of the day, we, we do need each other need each other's games. When we are together, five starters, we do complement each other with our in the way that we do play. So it's uh, easier said than done. Why can't you guys play? One guy isn't playing. I was out two or three games, whatever they need to love, and I was out. So it's, it, it's easier said than done, but it, it's also a uh, it's not as easy as a process. Mm -hmm. You're trying to figure out it on the fly of different guys coming to playing. Needless to say, you still had a chance to be in that game. So I, collectively as a group, we do have to figure it out out there. And this is going to be a season that presents different obstacles. So it's only going to either, either make us great or you know, disallow us to make excuses. At the end of the day, we have to still do ourselves. I got you. And, and, and in regards, I remember like there was a, a point last season when you guys had to figure things out. You know what I mean? I mean, does this seem a little bit, you know, last year it was doom and gloom on the road. I mean, but this one seemed a little bit more easy and a little bit more simpler. Like you guys are closer to it. Yeah, I think for the most part we have a, uh, I mean, we, we pretty much know when we're on the line. 
go out there and play and uh, move the basketball, sharing the basketball, allowing our defense to fuel our offense. Um, and we're a really good team because I think we allow too many turnovers to affect our offense, which then led to them getting the basketball, which allows us to not get stunned. We just got to be really solid. We got to have great energy to start games. Um, and, and we, we got to pull with one another. Obviously, different guys in and out. But that's kind of the, the key points to it for us to be successful. Stick with mm-hmm. so, uh, we'll be fine. And I know we will be. And, you know. huh. Thanks, man. Last question, Paul Hudrick. Hey, Tobias, Shake really carried the offense really for a long stretch there in the second half. Uh, what have you just seen from him from the time you've been here and gotten to know Shake? What, what have you seen from, you know, from that time to up until now? Shake's been great. I mean, he's just a guy that has a, a lot of confidence. Uh, and uh, he doesn't shy away from the moment. At the same time, he's, he's really skilled with the basketball and finishing. He's got the mid-range game, so he can pretty much score on uh, both three levels, three-pointer, mid-range, and get into the rim. Uh, he's good with the basketball pick and roll too. So tonight, he, he carried us all the way uh, to the end of the moments, and uh, we, we were finding him. We were just we were just trying to allow him to make big, big plays that he did in the quarter. So uh, he, he just got to continue to keep on going and. Continue to keep playing and, and uh, that's so, But he's been great for us coming on the bench as a six man thus far. A huge spark uh, right up the bench. Thanks, Bryce. Yeah. All right, good to go. Thanks, Tobias. All right. So as uh, as Tobias was talking about um, Shake a little bit, I kind of want to talk about him as well. I think it's important to point out that Shake Milton. Oh my goodness, I'm clicking the wrong thing. Sorry, one second. Shake Milton in the past three games has scored 28 points, 31 points, and 24 points on a pretty efficient scoring. Super efficient. Yeah, exactly. So insane efficiency. I think that's important to talk about considering like Doc is giving him that freedom and he's not taking it lightly and he's doing well with it. But, you know, listen, there's there's something to be said about when Doc took the job, right? In his first introductory press conference, one of the names he brought up multiple, multiple, multiple times, he kept bringing up Shake. And a lot of people looked at it like, what What the heck? Like, my God, he's – Doc, it, it just shows you the basketball mind of, of Doc Rivers. Well, I would also say that in Dwight Howard's intro, he did the same thing, and he didn't even know Shake's name. Right. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not just Doc having, like, an insane eye. Shake took a leak. She, yep. she took a leap, and I just I love how Doc really let us know from the beginning, though, from the onset, he was going to trust the, the kid. Yep. And, yep. and it is really panning out in so many different levels. Like we said, you know, um, and, and uh, you know, look, I, I, I stand corrected. I wasn't sure how good Shake could be. I thought he was nice, but I but you said it, Jason, in, in the last year, the, the, the leaps he's taken have, have been, you know, pretty big. And they don't seem big because he's not an explosive player, but he plays with pace. He play he changes speeds. Um, I I hate to use the comparison to uh, Andre Miller. Ben Simmons is coming up here. Oh, Ben Simmons will be next. Let, let's cut it off. Everyone mute. We're going to go into the. We'll start with Mark Narducci for Ben. Go ahead, Mark. Um, ben, I wanted to ask you just how frustrated were you by the turnovers tonight? That, that was obviously the difference of this game. 
Yeah, too many. Uh, we don't have those kind of players on that bus. Um, we got to come prepared and ready no matter who's face. I think we're in a situation like this. Hold ourselves accountable um, you know, early on in the game. Jason Blevins. Hey, Ben. Um, I know Doc wanted you to get downhill uh, at the beginning of the year. You're getting downhill. It seems like you're getting caught in no man's land. You're you're leaving your feet and looking for an outlet. Um, how are teams playing you differently, and, and what kind of adjustments do you plan on making? Yeah, every night is different. Um, the game prior, I had chip with other guys from Logan Payne. Um, and I was able to find my team so. Um, tonight, you know, they were very handsy. Um, a lot of hands that like to score some of these. That's on me just to slow down. Um, not leave. Thank you. Lauren. Hey, Ben. How heartening has it been to see Shake perform the way that he has in the last few games? Like, as you look ahead into the rest of the season, how crucial can he be? as productive as he's been. Yeah, he's been great offensively. Um, she's been staying aggressive into the line, uh, taking shots. And uh, you know, he's working the game, so he's been great. great. Noah Levick. Hey, Ben. Uh, you started with Tyrese these past few games. Uh, what's it been like playing with him, and what are some of the main differences there as opposed to starting uh, next to Seth? Um, it's, it's been good. So stay aggressive. Um, you can score more. I love him already. You know, he's still learning. So you know, I'm still trying to help him out a little bit with certain things. Uh, he's, he's got this. He's going. Derek. Hey Ben, I guess just real quick, like how is your knee and is that impacting you on the court at all right now? Uh, no, I feel good. Um, you know, at, at times, you know, it's trying to get my legs under me, sorry, under me. Um, you know, it, it's, it's tough, you know, we've got to back to back tomorrow, so we'll see how I feel, but, um, you know, overall, I'm feeling solid. All right. looks like that's it. Any more questions? All right. Let's, that's good. Thanks, Ben. Okay. Um, just wow! Great, great, here. great job, Jason. That was yeah, excellent. Fine. Jason, your camera's still on for six for the. Uh, let me just let you know. Uh, just in case any of our viewers thought I wouldn't ask that question, <laughs> uh, if you hung out with us for the last three hours, it 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 would have been criminal for me not to ask that question. Yeah. So it had to be asked. Uh, I think, you know, I think I think he uh, acknowledged the problem as much as he will. Um, yeah. So uh, I appreciate. I, I see in the comments, uh, you guys thought it was a good question. So just yep. know that if I'm on here and I'm giving <clears throat> constructive feedback, uh, I'm giving it to him as well. It's not. It's not something I wouldn't say to his face. Awesome. So should we continue or should we close it out? What should we do? Yeah, I think I think we're going to get one more player. Um, not sure who it'll be. Maybe Shake. All right. All right. I'm now seeing Ben Simmons on my screen, by the way. So we beat, we beat that. <laughs> I know. I know. We're well ahead of NBC Sports Philadelphia. <laughs> You cannot find this anywhere else. Please be sure to subscribe. Please be sure to turn on notifications uh, and smash that subscribe button. Thank you, everybody here for watching. Uh, we are the TPL YouTube channel. You guys are off. Please like the video, by the way, as well. Right now we got we got 48 people watching and 29 likes. So awesome. go 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 watch that. Go go really go like appreciate the video it. if you can. What you're seeing from us for those 48 people, you're seeing us level up because we're not satisfied. We're not perfect. Mm -hmm. Our games aren't ideal. We have holes in our game. 
we're going to keep working on it. We're going to keep getting better. So um, we expect the players to do the same. And we're going to hold them accountable if they don't. So this is this is a level up for us. Period. <laughs> Period. <laughs> What's a good question for Shake Milton? Everybody, let us know in the comments. Do, does anyone else get the, like when you look at Mark Narducci? You, and does anyone else get like everybody loves Raymond like vibes? I never watched that show. <laughs> yeah, love Mark. Mark's a great dude. Mark is awesome. I've, I've Mark got Mark. a Mark got a thirty-five year uh, signed Sixers jersey framed at the beginning of last year at the media luncheon uh, presented by Brett Brown. So Mark's been in this game a long time. Mark, I, I've met Mark on multiple occasions when I was writing for a, a local website covering high school sports. Mark is the kind of guy that will go out, he'll cover a Sixers game, he'll cover an Eagle, but if you talk to him, he'll tell you he'll love to go cover the South Jersey high school girls soccer playoff. And yep. like he loves – just like that, that stuff as well. I mean, you want to talk about a hardworking guy um, and one of the most down to earth guys you can meet. It's Mark Nardu. hundred percent. And he's in Delaware quite a bit with the blue coats. Yeah. He's working on a story. Um, and uh, you know, you can, you can count the number of Philly uh, beat reporters who have been to a Delaware blue coats game on one hand. Um, and one, and the first time two. I met Mark was in Delaware at the 76ers field house. And he was just super nice. He was just like, hi, I'm Mark. Like, that was it. Absolutely right. <laughs> Absolutely right. Dwight Howard will be up next. Again, Dwight Howard next. Not sure I have a question for Dwight. You could talk about his uh, talk about his like how well he's been rebounding and what he's changed to uh, keep his fouls down a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, what's What's it like playing in the pick and roll with Tyrese versus Jake Milton? He's <laughs> yeah. I I I don't want to ask that because so many of their turnovers were forcing it into Dwight tonight. Can you add? I think the foul one's a good a good point. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it is. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. By the just, way, I've just raised my hand for you, Justin. I'm gonna yes. Ask you. In case anybody's watching that has not subscribed, you're still watching Tobias Harris on NBC Sports Philadelphia. <laughs> Keep keep talking. He'll be a couple minutes. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off. I gotta. I'm on kid duty in the morning. So uh, <laughs> at Philly underscore man, Jason, this has been awesome, man. I love this. Teach. All right. So I'll see you guys. Uh, I'll see, see you, guys. Rob. See you, coach. Thanks for hopping on with us, man. Guys, go follow Rob at Philly underscore madness on Twitter, and make sure you go watch all his videos when we post them up on the Painted Lines YouTube channel. So. Uh -huh. Appreciate Peace out, Rob. Have a good one. Say it. That is the voice of the people, Rob Lange. He is the host of the Madness Podcast every Thursday night with Jessica Town, uh, 8 p.m., 8.30 p.m. East Coast time. Uh, just please, please, please give him a follow on Twitter, at Philly underscore Madness. Thank you, everyone. This definitely increases the length of our post game shows. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know our philosophy: try everything, stick with what works, right? <laughs> I know. I think this is a unique uh, path that no other Sixers fan has seen. Um, so I think this is really cool. Rob, Big Shane Gillis says, you're an absolute beast. Um, Rob is the best. He, dude, dude is so talented.
Yeah, let's uh let's while we're while we're waiting for Tobias, let's talk about Dwight Howard a little bit. Or sorry, while we're waiting for Dwight Howard, let's talk about Dwight Howard a little bit. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um something that is interesting and obviously that you've seen in the past few games is that he's been having he's been doing a little better on his fouls. So you look in I got in the Denver game and Brooklyn game, both uh at least the Denver game without Joel uh, he had five fouls. You've seen slowly they've been going down. Atlanta, he had two fouls. Miami, two. Uh, the second game against Miami, he had four. But um, I think ultimately you could see there he's doing better about not staying out of foul trouble. And also look at the rebounds tonight in comparison to what he has been getting. Like, yeah, I think I think part of that is um, the, the Grizzly just went small tonight, which was a surprise. I didn't expect yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so some of this is, is to be expected, dominating glass um, and not fouling as much because because quite frankly they weren't they weren't really forcing it low. I'm looking at the shot chart from Memphis right now and uh, it's uh, it's it looks very similar to to, um, to what the sixers had. They were settling for a lot of mid-range stuff. As much as I love Ben Simmons, or sorry, as much as I love Dwight Howard, like two games this year, he's had zero, three games this year, he's had uh, zero turnovers. Outside of that, 29.9%, almost 30% turnover percentage. Yeah. I, I, like, that That is everything for Dwight Howard. If, if he can stay out of foul trouble mm-hmm. and limit turnovers – he is a massive impact player for the Sixers. Yeah, but he doesn't have good hands, so part of that you just you got to accept. Um, just so just so everyone's aware, this is what we go through every night. Wait until Embiid's going to talk. I mean, Joel makes us wait a half an hour sometimes after the game. Uh, I think there's a you know it's 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 part of the job that we have to just wait until they're all done. Yeah, you know, real quick, Chris Dunn. By the way, we are reading your comments. Don't worry. Uh, just not all of them. Not all of them are going to be asked. I, we trust me. We see you. You're asking some real good questions. Um, we're just so some. We just can't. We just cannot uh, get to all of them at all times. So, don't worry. We are reading them. Coming Chris, shortly. Chris Dunn is salty. <laughs> he, Jason Blevins will start us off. Go ahead, Jason. Hey, Dwight. Um, totally different story on the boards in the second half. I think you guys out-rebounded them by like 10 or 11 in the second half. Tell, tell me how you stayed out of foul trouble tonight. Um, that was really important. And then dominating the glass in that second half. You might be muted. Hey, Dwight, is the microphone there in front of you? Oh, I think this is better. Yes. That's perfect. All right, my bad. Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> uh, first couple of games we didn't see uh, uh, not as uh, aware of you know, how he's been fighting for three times. Like, uh, tonight, last game, I'm just trying to do a better job, uh, just getting to my spot early and making the ref see my hands. So, you know, with me. Seemed like a wrestling match, and I was just trying to throw people out there. But so I did a better job of that tonight. Uh, but now, you got to work on those free throws. And, uh, I think uh, he hit a couple of those free throws and he gave us a better chance of winning the game. And it was kind of just uh, my, my, my focus at the free throw lines. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Lauren Rosen. Hey, Dwight, I know you probably were hoping for a different outcome tonight, but can you just tell us a little bit about how big Shake has been in the last few nights and, and how big he can continue to be if he keeps playing this way? Oh, uh, Shake is great. Um, the way he plays, he plays the attacks. Uh, he's doing an amazing job this season. He's getting to his spots. Um, he's shooting great shots. Uh, I haven't seen him really take any. Bad shots, poor shots. He's done a good job 
people come up, people, you know, just being pissed. So I'm happy to see all of this success. He got us back in the game with his offense skills that he had uh, late in the game. So I thought he did an amazing job. We got to keep feeding him uh, late in the game. Seems like he's finishing. He gets buckets down the stretch. And he did a good job. You know, a real kind of shape. We keep giving, uh, giving these kids to despise. Thank you, Dwight. Any more questions for Dwight? Going once? Going twice. Going, twice. going twice. There you go. I think that's it. Uh, thank you, Dwight. All right, everyone, just a reminder, uh, pregame availability tomorrow at 5.30. Tomorrow night, 5.30. Thanks, everyone. Okay, there you have it. So you, um, thanks for everyone who stayed on. Um, that's uh, that's it for tonight as far as postgame. So. That's the first time I've seen Matt in a long time. It's good to see him. Wearing a hat tonight. I know, yeah. right? Yeah, he's doing a great job. I mean, Matt Murphy, uh, totally underrated, uh, is the play-by-play -play announcer. He's the Mark Zumoff for the Delaware Bluecoats. Plus, he works in the PR department, uh, makes our lives much easier. Uh, he does double duty in Delaware where he, he does what we just saw him do, manage the press conferences. He does that af before and after games. And also does the Mark Zumoff role um, doing play-by-play -play for TV and for radio. So Matt Murphy is the best. Love our best. Says TPL, best Sixers outlet. Dude, that, that means the world to us. I, I don't even know where to begin to say thank you. Uh, Justin, plugs. Let's wrap it up. I mean, go follow me on Twitter if you'd like, at J underscore Persichetti. Um, I mean, listen – like you, you see the content we're putting out, you see it, you see the consistency. We're here. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Like the videos, please like all of them. It'll really help us grow this channel. It like like Dives was saying during the middle of the live stream. If you start liking videos, we start getting recommended to other people. So please, please keep liking every video you can. Uh, keep watching us. We appreciate you coming out. We appreciate how active how active you are in our comment section. We love talking to you guys. We're all fans too, just like you are, and it's fun. It's fun to us. Yep, Jason. Justin stole my uh, my thunder. <laughs> you know, I, I only ever uh, plug the uh, the the viewers uh, and the comments. I love tonight. Had a great time with this. Uh, you know, it's a out of conference game. Wouldn't normally be a very exciting thing. But uh, this was a great experience. Uh, we're, we're glad you stuck with us. And lastly, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone here commenting uh, relentlessly tonight. The comments were crazy. Um, and this is the TPL YouTube channel. Please check us out on Twitter at, um, at the Painted Lines, at thepaintedlines.com. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. We're there for you every single day. Literally live streaming every, like, what, two, three pods every single day. So thank you, everyone. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow.